YouTube viewers, it's Crystal here. I wanted to make another video. Um, this video is going to be on something that I learned recently, and it's going to be on the Iris status set because I was able to get an Iris status set on um, Excel. And since I was able to get an Iris data set on Excel, I thought I'd do a little bit of work on it. So the first thing that I did, I'm going to do one, two, two parts of this video. One part is going to be just using the Iris data set the way that I would normally do it. And the second part is the Iris data set that I have converted to a table. Uh, because basically... You use the same formulas, but in a table, you use the formulas differently. So the first thing that I had to do was they said, they asked some questions. What is the distribution of each species? Well, they don't say uh, we, what area they want the distribution to be, whether they want it to be sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. Uh, and since they don't specify what distribution they want, if you try to run a graph, then it's just going to have all of that information on it. And I suppose you've got your petal link. I suppose you've got your petal link. If you did it, because the thing is, is that the species have different lengths and widths of their petals and their sepals. So it's going to be really hard to do a distribution. So I just skipped that question because they didn't specify. So you've got each species. Now what you could do is you could filter it. And then when you filter it, you can do a graph of the filter. Now that is something that you could do. But still, they don't specify whether they want the length or the width of the petal or the sepal. And then the next question is, what is the correlation between the petal length and width? And it's a linear correlation because I looked that up. And then what is the average petal length of each species? So um, we've got the average petal length of each species. And um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the unique function. So unique equals F2 to F151. So that's 150 rows of data. And then you've got three unique categories being Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. And then, so after the unique uh, function, then what you're going to do is we're going to use average ifs. So you're going to average ifs on the species is C2 to C151. And then the length, no, no, sorry. The, 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 the length is going to be C2 to C151. And the species is going to be F2 to F151. And then I put dollar signs in, the, in between the cell references to make it an absolute reference. And then H2 is going to be the actual species, which is going to be Setosa. And then so you get an average length of 1.464. For the Setosa, the Versicolor is going to be 4.26, and the Virginica is going to be 5.552. So that is how you get the length of each, the petal length of each species. And now they say, ask the question, what species has the largest petal area? So I looked it up on the internet to try to find the area of a petal. And in order to find the area of the petal, 
you have to use a sine and a cosine and a radius and then you need to calculate that with the sine, the cosine and the radius and I just thought well since the pedal is close to a square shape then I'll just do the area equals the height times the width and I know that's not going to give you the exact area because you don't know the radius and because you don't know the radius you're not able to get the sine and the cosine to calculate the formula but it's going to get you in the ballpark and then so we use the form exactly the same formula but instead of using the pedal length we're going to be using the pedal area which is another column of data that I have created and it's going to be uh, E column E and then you're going to put use the information in H2 so that's going to be 0.3628 for the Setosa it's going to be 5.7204 for the Versicolor and the 11.2962 for the Virginica Virginica so I would venture to say, based upon the fact that the Virginica is larger than the Setosa and the Versicolor, that the Virginica is going to have the largest petal area as well. And then you've got another question, how many observations are there for each species? And I already knew that. But if you want to do it again, what we can do and I'm just doing this right now. So we'll take this and we're going to copy it over just to copy and paste. Um, I'm going to say count ifs. And I'm just really guessing. At this point in time, I'm just really guessing. Hoping that it'll work. And it worked. And I guessed it. I just did it really shall we say, did it on the fly. So I knew that there were 50 observations for each species, but if you wanted to do it technically, then that's technically how you count the observations for each species. So those are the questions that I answered. <laughs> And so now we go over to the iris table. And on the iris table, it asks exactly the same questions with the exception that it's been converted to a table. So in order to, the thing about uh, converting uh, an array to a table is the fact that you can change the array. You can add and delete information. And personally, this is the first time I've ever really made a table. And so, but since it's the first time I've ever really made a table, I thought, well, it's a good place to make a video on this. Because if I've never made a table, then I think nobody else has ever made a table either. But... I'm not sure I'm going to be using a lot of tables in my work and because I get a different every week I get a, a whole new spreadsheet to use so if you want to do it you go into home and then it says format as table and then it will allow you to click the table format that you want and then when you click on what you want then what will happen is over here, it'll ask you in one of the boxes over here, it's going to ask you to 
give the table a name. And so I gave my table a name like Iris Table. That's what I did, Iris Table. So we're going to do this again. So we're going to the obs for each species. And then so it's going to be count ifs. And that's again, that's just something I did on the fly. Pedal area. Take out the pedal table species. And then we're going to say H2. And so there it gave you the obs for each species. So we're, we're giving you exactly the same answers that you had when it wasn't a table. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it when the data is in an array. And it's how you do it when you convert the data to a table. And me personally, I think tables, it's going to take a while to get used to working with tables. But the good thing about tables is you can change information within the table. Whereas it's harder to do it, if at all, in an array. But since... Um, since the spreadsheets that I get to work out with, I get the same spreadsheet every week that I have to manipulate. I don't think it's going to do me a lot of good personally to convert it to a table. But if you're going to be working with the same spreadsheet over and over again and just making updates to it, then maybe a table is the best way to go. Because if it's in a table, then the information will be automatically updated. So let's say here on Setosa, we'll say pedal length. We'll just say 10 pedal length. So it's changed it. But I'm not sure that you'll be able to do it on an array, but it will change it on a table. So that's the difference between an array and a table. So I just thought it would be a good idea to cover some Excel uh, fundamentals and so you can learn how to use Excel, which I know how to use Excel. I've used Excel for more than 30 years, but um, obviously because Excel has new versions, every few years you get a new version of Excel, so I thought it would be a good idea to learn as much about the new version of Excel as I possibly can and learn about the old uh, functions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video because I've talked about everything that I want to talk about. I've talked about Iris data set in an array and talked about Iris data set in a table. And then we've answered some questions about the Iris data set. So as the correlation between the length and the width of the pedal, the average length of each the the pedal of each species, what's the largest pedal area, and how many observations for each species, and we didn't talk about the distribution for each species, but if that had been more clear in their request, we could have done a distribution as well, but you could do. A distribution but then you would have to like be filtering data or selecting data only with uh, a Setosa versicolor or Virginia Virginica because if you try to create a distribution with all three it's gonna be muddled up because all three are different shapes and sizes so thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please like and subscribe. And I will be making another video for you in the near future.